So let me start with asking something. You can probably think of a bunch of different things, labels, that have been said about you over the years, right? Some that were reinforced and are remembered about you, and some just said in passing comments that just stuck with you for whatever reason. Most likely, you can think of at least one comment that was good, that you like or are proud of about yourself, one that was harmful, that was definitely negative and was meant to be. And finally, one said in a passing comment, a compliment, or a completely neutral comment that just rubbed you wrong for whatever reason and left a negative impact on your thought process. So here is what I have observed and learned about kids internalizing labels. Kids, for the most part, believe what we hear. And when something doesn't match up, we try to make it. So if a kid hears that they're smart, or if a kid hears that they're a troublemaker, they'll assume that it's true. And as they grow up, it can stick with them and become a large part of their identity to them. And they will actively engage in behaviors that they think supports this. And while sometimes this is fine, our identities are a big part of ourselves naturally, and many of us are and should be proud of many parts of our identity, sometimes this pressure can develop negatively. Let me tell you about a negative label that affected me personally. Since I was little, like five years old little, a lot of my family members, relatives, and family friends would tell me how skinny I was. And you might be thinking, well, that's a compliment. What can be so bad about that? Or being skinny is a good thing. You should consider yourself lucky. And my family members never imagine any harm can come to, from their words because in their mind, I'm just beautiful. And when I was little, I would never really know how to react to these comments, but I guess I found some sort of pride in them. And they were said so often that they really stuck with me. Even as I grew and as a girl in this world developed insecurities, they stayed with me. But that word changed from a small word in these comments to a label and became something that I actively needed to try to continue being. Because as I grew, my body changed, but in my mind, I needed to stay the same as these people saw me. I truly realized the negative effects of this during COVID. I needed a medication in order to know the amount of dosage to give me the doctor needed my weight. Because it was COVID, this was all handled virtually, so I was just told to go upstairs and weigh myself. But when I saw the number 120-something flash up at me, my head spun. The word skinny was blurry, but there in the back of my mind, and I couldn't imagine telling this weight to the two people who had said this word to me, even in just mindless comments. So I went downstairs, and I lied. This could have been very harmful for my health, and I can tell you that none of these people could have ever imagined that their comments would turn into this harmful label. And that's my point. You might think that this is a little bit extreme of an example, but it's just my personal experience. And if you look, you can see how other words negatively affect kids' processes, thought processes every day. And the words, let me point out, are definitely not always about physical appearance. Kids labeled as smart can work themselves past their limit to try and achieve the standard they think they need to uphold, which can be an impossible standard. You know how kids labeled as lazy or dumb don't apply themselves when they can achieve so much more, because why even try if no one believes in them or even expects anything of them? I see kids affected by both these labels and so many more at school all the time. And a study in 2015 said children whose parents or teachers label them as troublesome are called names or are constantly being reminded about how troublesome they are by parents, siblings, other members of extended family, and even family acquaintances. They are often in trouble with authority figures and are frequently in confrontations with parents and other family members. I know I don't have all the answers, but I thought this publication said it well. Instead of labeling a child as a kind child or a helpful person, try saying, you are being kind, or he was very helpful. Instead of saying, you are shy, or don't be shy, st try statements such as, it takes you a little while to feel comfortable around people you don't know well, or you're very talkative with people you do know well. Instead of labeling a child as a whiner, a crybaby, or selfish, try more descriptive, more positive terms, such as tenderhearted, or aware of your own feelings. Instead of saying, ugh, don't be so picky, say, it's okay if you don't want to try it this time. Avoid limiting a child with using labels unintentionally. This could help so many kids tremendously and also help parents and teachers with learning to communicate better with kids. When I was first researching this topic, I found tons of articles and research, which was somehow no surprise and a big surprise at the same time. 
it made sense because I had experienced and seen this firsthand and in my peers in school growing up. But it didn't make any sense because if there's all this research available, why did we not know more about it? How did parents and teachers still use labels without considering the negative effects they might have? The negative thought processes they might be creating in kids' minds? In school, we are constantly hearing about research on healthy sleeping habits, positivity, the art of breathing and yoga. And keep in mind, I'm not saying these things aren't important. They're helpful skills to know. But we all know by now that teens should get eight to 10 hours of sleep at night, but are repetitively getting taught this like it's new information. What we need is new information. We all also know the phrase, see something, say something, which means if you are, if you see someone being bullied, tell a teacher a trusted adult. What most of us don't know is what to do if it's not a bully that makes us feel bad, but that teacher or trusted adult and passing comment phrase a label. And my question is really two. Why do we not know what to do when there's all this research available and we've learned all these other things? And why aren't more adults, parents, and teachers aware of this issue? Parents and teachers especially should be more aware of this issue because our education is affected by how we are seen and treated. A publication from the University of Nevada Reno said, when children are given labels, it not only affects the way they see themselves, but what is expected of them and how they are treated, which in turn influences who they become. For example, a strong-willed child labeled as troublesome will likely make it more difficult for parents to show empathy and try to correct the problem behavior. According to a famous study back in 1965, both negative and positive labels changed how teachers treated students. This has been affecting students in school since 1965, yet if we were taught more about this, it could help everyone. So if being more aware of how our words can affect people, why aren't we? Everyone should learn about how the language we use can affect people in the long term. I know I've thrown a lot at you, and I'm not saying that you need to get rid of all labeling words in your vocabulary. I myself am a person who's very part of many parts of my identity using labels. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm an artist. I'm a really silly person. I'm pretty outgoing. And I'm also bi, which is something I've been too scared to say in front of my parents until now, but I've shouted out proudly in front of friends and strangers and peers. And sometimes using labels for yourself can be empowering, but we shouldn't place them on others and limit others with labels especially youth who haven't yet discovered who they are, because this can be very harmful towards them. So we should all be more careful of what we say, because you can never know the lasting effects. Don't use labels to limit people. My name is Billy Soler. Thank you so much.